I'm Robert, and those a couple of children that I wrote, and I, I compose out of doors uh, quite often. And these I compose out of doors in a place that's labelled on some maps as the Happy Valley, which was one of my favourite walks when I was living in Oxford. So this is 2006, that's some years ago. And uh, so uh, I just this uh, this demonstrates what I was just talking about the other day, that you can use volume swells and you can also use tremolo on the recorder. So, and the effect of that is, it sounds a little bit more like the flute than it does the recorder, because the recorder is typically played with uh, the breath very constant through all the notes. The notes are, you get expression, uh, you get dynamic expression through articulation, so how you start the note, the attack of the note, the consonants that you use the equivalent of the consonants in speech and you get vibrato normally using pitch vibrato rather than tremolo so the because I've changed all those things then that's why I, I do of course do a little bit of I do the uh, articulation as well that's common to to all wind instruments but the uh, uh, that's why it may sound a bit more like a flute than like a conventional recorder sound and I'm just going to show you uh, some of the some of these things I'm going to show you what the what uh, the tremolo sounds like and how it compares with pitch vibrato and I'm going to show you the dynamic and volume swells and I'm going to show you also how you can do this yourself as an experiment although I don't recommend it because it's not the way that recorders normally taught especially if you're a beginner but it's just out of interest so uh, and there's absolutely nothing special about my recorder. This is the uh, a plas cheap plastic Yamaha recorder. I just and I got it just today. It's arrived in the post. As you can see, it's a transparent uh, recorder, which is quite um, interesting. You'll we'll find out later on. And uh, so, anyway, I rather like using plastic for the descant, not so much for the larger instruments, but on the descant. The ideal wood for a desk and is very dense, and plastic quite closely approximates the ideal uh, wood for for a desk and recorder. It's not such a good approximation for the deal, ideal wood for a treble, and I think it, it gives a slightly different sound from wood, but I rather like it. And uh, this is not the recorder I normally I play, but uh, but it's uh, it's an, it's it's. Uh, I'm rather pleased when I got it. It does actually have a rather nice sound, I thought. So that's why I used it. And also we'll see why later, another reason later on. So, uh, so first of all, I'll show you tremolo. So this is what tremolo sounds on the recorder. And now this is what uh, pitch vibrato with roughly this but it's actually less for a uh, change in volume, it's like this. When the pitch is changing and the, vol and the volume also changes along with it as well. So that's normally what you play on the recorder, it's a change of pitch and volume simultaneously. And many think it's impossible to play tremolo on the recorder. And now I'm going to show you the uh, volume swells. So volume swells, That's by that I mean you have a constant change, uh, a constant pitch. Now you will hear, you may hear that something sounds a bit like a pitch change. If you listen carefully, the fundamental, the lowest note of the pitch, the, the, the thing that is, is what normally you call the note by, the fundamental pitch of the note stays the same and it's something up higher up, there might be some changes in the higher partials or you may just hear that there seems to be a change of timbre during the note. So that's what happens during the volume swells. So let's show one of these. It's, I don't know if you heard that, it's quite a subtle change in volume, but there's a change in volume, a change in the timbre, and the pitch stays the same. And now this is what happens if you change the volume by the same amount on the recorder without using a special technique. Where you get a change in the pitch along with the volume. 
and uh, so that's the pitch and volume changes and there's also a slightly subtle effect also according to how the note ends so when you end the note you can go the pitch, you can actually make the pitch go up at the end of the note as it dies away or go down then the pitch went up very slightly as it, as it faded away and like that the pitch went down as the note faded away so that's another thing you can do is you can make the end of the note stay completely steady you can make it go very slightly up in pitch or you can make the pitch go down as you, as you stop the note with your tongue and uh, so now I'm going to show you uh, 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 ex explain a bit about how you actually achieve like I can't a lot of that those things I can't really explain how you do it so I don't really know how I do tremolo I don't really know how I change the way that the pitch goes as the note dies away when you end the note but I can show you uh, how to change the pitch of a, a help note and that is reproducible and and so uh, there's unfortunately the amount of pitch change is small so even the most noticeable pitch change and I've been practicing in this way for many years now since I first noticed it the most noticeable pitch change is about a tenth of a tone or 20 cents and that is still considered by many to be quite a small pitch change it is less than you would normally get in even quite subtle pitch vibrato on the recorder. So even that is quite difficult to notice if you aren't used to working with microtonal music, though most microtonalists will hear it immediately as being just two distinct notes because uh, it's actually quite a large pitch difference. They're used to using scales with steps much smaller than that. But to start with, you, uh, you will uh, only be able to achieve about five cents of pitch difference and five cents is often quoted as being less than the just noticeable discrimination is sometimes said to be six cents although people vary in what they say so according to many musicians a five cents is no difference in pitch that they can hear now uh, this is something you can actually learn to hear so uh, and, and a nice analogy is with uh, astronomy and in astronomy, I remember when I was first shown a galaxy through a big telescope and the astronomer who was showing it to me, he turned the galaxy around, he sensed it on the galaxy and said, look, I can see a galaxy through the telescope. And so when I went, and he said, go and have a look. And so I went and had a look and all I could see was blackness. And he said, well, try looking out of the corner of your eye. And I could still only see blackness because out of the corner of your eye, you're more sensitive to light. But eventually, I did see a slight change in the blackness. So these wonderful pictures of galaxies that you see, well, through a telescope, you know, these are very much enhanced in the light. And through a telescope, a big telescope pointing at the sky, for all except the very brightest galaxy, then all you will see is blackness and a slight change in the blackness, which you won't see to start with. But uh, with uh, practice, and eventually you will learn to recognize these small changes in blackness and eventually you will actually see it as being a smudge of light which is the galaxy so you will eventually just be able to turn the telescope at that patch of sky that most people just see as a bit of black sky and you'll see a smudge of light in the middle so it's just like that with the recorder that you uh, with, with the recorder with pitch that uh, what you originally heard as being no change in pitch at all you begin to hear as being actually a slight change in pitch and then eventually you hear it as two distinct pitches and eventually you can just play it back in your mind's ear and you remember them as two distinct pitches, two distinct steps in, in, in uh, two distinct pitches in your mind's ear. So five cents can be like that. And you can learn to hear five cents as being two distinct pitches like as a step of 240 equal for instance. And uh, the thing that confuses it in the case of sound is that there's a psychoacoustic phenomenon that when you play a note higher in pitch it sounds uh, very like the lower note, the lower pitch played a bit louder. 
So you may think that the note was just played a little bit louder when actually it was difference in pitch. And so that's going to be particularly confusing in the recorder if you're used to hear, used to this, of thinking that something higher in pitch is just louder when they're very, very similar in pitch. Because what we're trying to do is to achieve a pitch difference with the volume steady. And, and uh, what you uh, get if you don't use the technique is the pitch and volume changing. So to disentangle a slightly change in volume and slight change in pitch, and if you're not used to listening to it, then all you will hear is that there's a change in volume when the pitch difference is as small as that. And, and, you, and you will just assume that the pitch has changed as well. So, so it's going to be difficult to start with, but you, uh, you can do it. I mean, you, what you could do also is to uh, get a, a reference tone and hear if you can hear beats against the uh, note and then another one that is uh, five cents sharper and you could, might be able to then tell which of those it is. And also, if you use a more extreme technique, you can actually get 10 cents, which is uh, outside the JNT for uh, musicians. So presumably most musicians can hear that, many musicians can hear that as it is a change in pitch. And so, anyway, the technique is quite uh, simple for just this small pitch change. You just blow straight down the recorder, and then you blow across. And that difference in pitch, which uh, here's the difference in pitch, is about, uh, that's if you're five cents step. Now, if you uh, then play in a very extreme way across it, like this, then that's a more noticeable pitch difference of ten cents, which uh, uh, many musicians will actually be able to hear as two distinct pitches. Now, to get the 20 cents difference, you have to blow in a very smooth way down the recorder. So I think the normal recorder sound, there's a little bit of roughness in the air. So you keep your throat very open, and you keep your mouth very open, and you breathe straight down the recorder. And then you can get the note about 10 cents, uh, about five, about 10 cents uh, flatter. So about a twentieth of a tone flatter, and the combination of the two gives you your tenth tone, or twenty cents. So, and that's your twenty cents difference which to microtone the ears is quite a dramatic difference in notes, very distinct notes. But if you're not used to working with microtonal music, then it might not seem too dramatic to you. And uh, so, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the technique uh, for what it is. And, uh, uh, but uh, you recap, if you're a beginner musician, a beginner recorder playing, or if you're learning recorder technique, then what I'm, I'm not teaching you recorder technique because it's not teaching you a recorder technique. I don't know of any recorder player who teaches this way. So you're pretty much on your own. Uh, you're in, in the unexplored territory. But if you're a professional recorder or you're experimental and you don't mind doing things so all wrong in inverted commas, then it might be fun to try it out. And, uh, and then now the other thing is I have an idea of how a physicist could actually measure this. So that was why I got this recorder from Yamaha. Now I don't know how this will work, I'll try to show you a little bit closer. But you can see, can you see the mouth, the mouth, uh, you can see the thumb hole through the recorder. So the, uh, so it's, it's kind of, it's semi-transparent, it is actually quite good. And I think, you know, I can't quite read the music through it, so it's not too, too brilliant. But uh, uh, I, I just, we can certainly see some detail through it and with good illumination. And, and so my thought was maybe some physicist could, if they can find some way of seeing what's actually going on inside the recorder when, when this is happening. And it would be fascinating if any of you have the necessary equipment to be able to trace uh, what's going on. Uh, so my hypothesis is that you have uh, uh, turbulence because it's the rougher air that seems to raise the pitch. So you have um, the air is the same breath pressure 
but there's stuff happening laterally. And it's probably falling into little uh, vortices, is my guess. And the reason I, I guess that is because vortices are very stable in air. And I mean micro vortices of just a millimeter or so across. So tiny little vortices may be forming in the mouthpiece here. When uh, slightly rough air goes into the mouthpiece, it might form tiny little vortices in there. Vortices are very stable, so they could survive the passage, and then uh, they could hit the edge here. And, and then, uh, so one thing they could do is that they might reduce the volume at the same pitch, so enabling you to raise the pitch at the same volume. Another thing they could be doing is they might be changing the density of the air, they might be changing the acoustic properties, the speed of the sound of the air inside the airway. Uh, they might be making their, uh, I suppose, reduce, reduce the density, I'm not sure. Uh, they might be making, changing the width, effective width of the tube or the effective length of the tube. I mean, there are quite a few things that could be done that it could make a difference if the air is turbulent inside of the tube rather than smooth. So it could be something happening at the edge or something happening in the tube due to the difference between smooth and turbulent air. And so it'd be very interesting if some physicist is interested and I imagine it's probably not too hard. If you are, if some of you watching this, you may have your own home lab or you may, uh, you may, you may have a lab where you can, where you've got all the apparatus to hand anyway to just try this out. You can get one of these for about 10 pounds. So you know, just get yourself a, a transparent recorder and, and maybe you can know, you know, actually, somebody might be able to find out what is going on. And, uh, and the, actually the change in pitch is quite reproducible, I would imagine. So if you have a very smooth airstream, or if you have a narrow jet uh, and you int introduce a little bit of obstruction into the airstream, you might be able to achieve this 20 cents difference, and surely at least the 5 or 10 cents difference. And these, even if you can't hear them, they are easily measurable. So there's uh, the instruments, the, the uh, various ways that you can measure the pitch to well within a cent, even to a tiny fraction of a cent for a long held note. So you could measure the difference in pitch and measure the volume. And if you measure the volume very accurately, make sure you have exactly the same volume for the two ways of playing. You should hear, I would predict, this difference in pitch. So uh, uh, I would be interested if someone would confirm this in a controlled laboratory environment, that there is in fact a change of pitch. And, if, and then having done that, then it would be very interesting to know uh, what actually is going on inside the recorder and why the pitch does change. So uh, that's what I, I wanted to, to talk about. And uh, I, I, I've got loads of these tunes that I've written over the years, so I've, uh, I've uploaded a couple before, so if anyone wants to hear more of these tunes, then I'm going to upload some more of them at a future date. And I can also upload the, uh, the scores for some of them as well. Uh, let's see how that goes.